The chemical core proving ground at Dugway, Utah, provides the space and facilities needed for the field testing of agents, munitions, and delivery systems. Recently, a series of hard target tests was conducted to determine how effectively field fortifications could be penetrated by the highly lethal nerve agent, GB, when delivered by artillery fire. The fortifications include open and partially covered one and two man foxholes, as well as bunkers which are partially or completely covered. The elimination of camouflage, which is unnecessary for the test, gives the area a rather stark appearance. This appearance is heightened by sampling instruments, which are placed both outside and inside of the entrenchments. These instruments record the concentration of agent as well as the time it takes for the agent to spread. And to document the effects of GB, Test animals are placed inside of the fortifications. From a distance of 3,000 yards, a battery of 155 millimeter howitzers fires a volley of six shells containing the nerve agent. As the rounds impact in the target area, the agent cloud, mingled with dust kicked up by the exploding shells, rolls over the emplacement. The main portion of the cloud is clearing the target area, but its effects are rapidly felt below the ground as well as above. Within 30 seconds, this pigeon has died. The guinea pig is the next to react and succumb. It should be remembered that less of the GB agent is required to kill man than to kill this guinea pig. Finally, a goat progresses from symptoms of poisoning to incapacitation and death. In the majority of the emplacements, animals were incapacitated in less than a minute and died within five to 15 minutes. The results of data analysis from these tests show us graphically what happened following the firing of the six GB filled shells on target. The agent began to spread immediately after impact. In 15 seconds, an incapacitating dosage covered an area of 2,600 square yards and had penetrated 8% of the fortifications within the cloud. In 30 seconds, the agent had effectively entered over 40% of the emplacements blanketed by the cloud. Within two minutes, 66% of all fortifications in the grid area had been penetrated. In summary, the tests demonstrated the rapid action of the agent cloud. About half of the total effect was obtained within the first 30 seconds. There was no significant increase after two minutes, although the agent vapor lingered within the fortifications after the cloud had passed. Survivors who might want to evacuate such entrenchments to avoid further exposure would become vulnerable to the full blast and fragmentation effects of the GB shells as well as high explosives. The results of the Dugway Proving Ground hard target tests with GB nerve gas add emphasis to the statement that on today's battlefield, there is literally no place to hide. Against the effects of toxic chemicals, the protective mask has always been the most important piece of individual equipment. It fully protects the delicate respiratory tract. But there are several chemicals which have a percutaneous effect. By absorption through the skin, they can cause casualties or even death. Nerve agents are so toxic that a very small amount of the liquid in contact with the skin can have a casualty effect. For these, the protective mask alone is not sufficient. The whole body must be protected with specially treated combat clothing. After exposure to chemical attack, even though protective clothing and masks are worn, further precautionary action may be necessary to prevent casualties. For this purpose, an individual decontamination and treatment kit has been developed. A dusting bag contains a decontaminating chemical and also a small capsule of agent-indicating dye. 
By crushing and kneading, the capsule is broken and the dye indicator is intimately mixed with the dusting powder. The decontaminating powder will neutralize small droplets and aerosols of nerve agent. At the same time, the presence of larger drops will be quickly revealed by a color change of the dye indicator. Small metal patches are provided to seal off these spots of gross contamination so as to prevent any possibility of the nerve agent penetrating through the clothing to the skin. The decontaminant is also applied to pieces of individual equipment to prevent secondary contamination which might result from handling the equipment. Blotting cloths are provided for removing any of the liquid agent which may have splashed on the skin. The affected skin area is then swabbed with a small bag of decontaminating material which has been moistened with water. This individual decontamination and treatment kit is effective in neutralizing mustard as well as the nerve agents. No change has been made in the method of impregnating outer garments of protective clothing, but the protective underwear has been vastly improved over the World War II type which was uncomfortable to wear and often caused skin irritation. Developed in coordination with the Quartermaster Research and Development Center, it is a soft textured, lightweight cotton fabric treated with high car and gives good protection against chemical agents. Its protective property is not diminished by perspiration. The newly standardized field protective mask M17 is much improved over older types. Vision and voice transmission are better, and having no external canister, it is streamlined and more comfortable to wear. New special purpose masks have also been developed. One of these is a new mask for the helicopter pilot, which provides unrestricted vision and is fitted with a microphone for aircraft radio communication. Of similar design is a special mask for armored personnel with an added feature for the comfort and efficiency of the tank crew. Provision is made for connecting the individual's canister to a large central canister in the tank. While operating the tank, air is supplied under pressure from the large canister to the mask of each crew member and breathing becomes effortless. A quick release connection permits the crew to bail out rapidly without loss of mask protection. Still another type of special mask has been developed for the casualty who is unable to wear his M17 mask because of head wounds. Bag-like in shape, it is made of filter material and equipped with clear plastic eyepieces. A gas-tight seal is formed by means of a drawstring which maintains moderate pressure around the neck. Thus, the patient is protected while being moved through a toxic atmosphere to an aid station or hospital. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is a newly developed technique of artificial respiration. In addition to medication, nerve gas casualties often may require aid in breathing. With one hand, the operator raises the patient's chin to open up his throat and upper airway. With the other hand, she holds his nose closed. Then she takes a deep breath and inflates his lungs, just like blowing up a balloon. The gauge at the upper right registers the percent oxygen saturation of the blood, as measured by an ear oximeter. Note how it falls off when the worker stops the treatment. The patient is quite incapable of breathing by himself, and without artificial respiration, the oxygen saturation of his blood soon drops to a low level. When the treatment is resumed, the oximeter reading rapidly returns to normal. The basic scientific groundwork for mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation was performed by the United States Army Chemical Research and Development Laboratories. And the clinical research was conducted under the auspices of the Army Medical Service at Baltimore City Hospital. 
This method of artificial respiration has been adopted both by the armed forces and the American Red Cross. Point source alarms have been developed to detect and automatically warn of the presence of nerve agents which, in vapor or aerosol form, are odorless and invisible. The larger model on the right has been adopted by the United States Navy for shipboard use. The smaller model is a later development, which carries its own power source. These alarms continuously sample the atmosphere through a chemically treated paper. A concentration of toxic agent in the air well below the level required to cause casualties produces a color change on the paper. This is detected by a photoelectric cell activating the alarm system. 